I have a Lamborghini and a Ferrari, and the parts cost so much money, it's ridiculous. But when is actually the right time to buy an exotic car? Stay tuned until the end, it'll be worth it. To begin, you must earn three times the amount of money on your car payment. Every bank is a little bit different, but usually in order to afford the payment, that's the consensus. So for example, if you can afford a $4,000 monthly car payment, you must earn at least $12,000 a month. This is only for the car, all right? So it does not include your mortgage payment, food bills, or any other items in your household that may cost you money. You don't want to buy a car if you only have enough money. We're talking about expensive cars here, exotic cars. And you know, parts can be pretty costly. I mean, I bought a little trim piece, cost me 1200 bucks. The stripe kit down the middle, which was missing on my car, cost a thousand. You know, there's a Lamborghini tax and a Ferrari tax, and it, it, it adds up. So you need to have enough money to have these luxury items uh, in order to pay them. Now you have also insurance, parts, fixing an exotic car, in general, is very expensive. Even replacing these damn Lamborghini parts, bumpers, carbon fiber panels, all of these are really expensive. And if you don't know how to change your oil, going to a dealership will cost you tons of money. I usually change my own oil. You know, replacing a blown engine will also cost you like 150,000. I mean, the prices are just astronomical and crazy for exotics, it's ridiculous. You know, it's very expensive. That's why you need to have more than just enough money if you wanna own exotic cars. The second way is obvious. You know, once you get your finances all stabilized and you got a whole bunch of money laying around, you know, and you're rich and you're wealthy, you could go ahead and walk around the corner and buy a half a million dollar Rolls Royce in cash, just like Andrew Tate's done. Basically, it's, it's easy, no problem, right? The third way is, which is my favorite, is you could take some of that money and you can roll it into real estate. Basically, you start funneling it through that, buying your assets, and then you could use that cash flow from it to pay your monthly you know, bill for that loan. Now, a lot of used car loans are very low interest rate. They're like 3%, 4%. They're just fantastic. And at the end of the day, you have your own real estate that basically generates cash flow and pays for your loan on your exotic. Now, my exotics are pretty much paid for because I've owned them for a while and, and my new Lambo I just got. But you know, again, the real estate keeps going up over time. So does these exotics. And basically you just replicate in an asset and exotics, you know, you can enjoy them and you can use them to store money. But you know, you also have full control over your investments, which is nice. So you're earning from real estate, you're making money, and you're not sad even if your car's value goes down a little bit, which usually they don't, because I usually like to buy models that are one previous because they bought them out, and then you jump in, you buy a nice clean example, they either maintain that value or go up. And the fourth way is really a, one of the ways that I don't really like to do it, but you could buy a car new or lease it, uh, and basically you can uh, just turn it back in when you're done. Some of these companies, you know, financing or buying straight cash, like what I did, is the route you want to take if you intend on keeping the exotic vehicle long term, and especially if you are purchasing an exotic vehicle as an investment, like I did. Because exotic cars like this appreciate in value over time. Again, financing differs greatly from leasing. When you lease, you're basically just paying the depreciation and fees over time and what you pay for is what you use for insure. As a result, it is a little bit cheaper, but you know, you're wasting all that money. So if you wanna switch out your exotic car every few years, leasing is, is a good idea for you. But for me, I have this Lamborghini and Ferrari because I can sell them twice, you know, or three times and make twice or three times the money that I originally paid for in the coming years. And to be quite honest with you, leasing is really not a good idea if you don't wanna lose any money. I'd rather just hack the car buy it new for a year and then you could jump out of it. But I'm not a person that likes to jump in and out of cars. I like to buy them, hold them for a long time. I'm an asset hoarder. I don't like to sell any of my assets because you can actually borrow against your exotics, which is very interesting. A lot of banks now let you borrow against, uh, they go up to 120% of the actual book value of the car. So if the car is 100,000, you can borrow up to 120,000, take that money back out and then roll it into real estate again. You don't have to be like one of these guys in the Facebook group saying that, hey, uh, I need to sell my car because I wanna buy a piece of real estate. It's not the case like that with exotics. 
they're actually considered an asset. You can borrow against them just like art or trading cards and real estate.